AC clutch, low fan, and here's high fan. Low fan, and it's off. Pretty cool, right? And that's cooling my transmission rate little mini radiator. So what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to simply cut off these ends here, so I don't need these style of plugs. Get rid of that. I'm going to strip the wires down. I'm going to add some extra wire. I'm going to add a connector here, which We'll melt to it to the wire itself and crimp it down. I'm going to heat this up, it's going to melt right to the wire once I install this one. See that? How it's actually fused to the wire? I'm going to install these little foam pads on the face of this rad cooler so that they don't damage anything. It'll help with some of the vibration. It'll brace it. These were not included in the kit, but I had these laying around, so I figured why not use them. And if they cover up the holes, just poke it with a little screwdriver or something. It'll clear them right up. I'm going to mock fit this thing to see how and where I want it. Because I have a little issue. I have this light bar here, and it's kind of impeding my ability to put it exactly where I want it. But actually, it's not that bad. The other thing is the bracket here. Let's see if you guys can see that. There's a bracket here holding the rad. It won't allow this cooler to go up any higher so we're just gonna have to mount it completely flush with the top edge of this thing and have a little bit of overhang which is okay since we're not gonna be needing the whole distance of this what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically cut it in half so it doesn't give me a hard time going through like a, a good mock fit is probably cut off a third somewhere near a half snip it right off it'll be easier going in this way so basically just slip this through carefully and I know this goes against the whole idea of, you know, damaging the rad. But believe me, that's how this, these are installed, even at the factory. If you're having a hard time sticking them through, you can take a screwdriver and slowly slip it through just to aid yourself. Like that. There's one. Just let that hang. And then we're going to do the next one, which is all the way down here. Slip that through. Another zip tie. The way you want to install the little feet or the clips, the retainers, is put the little foam pad that comes with it and slip it through the back. It will act like a zip tie. Just gotta find the sweet spot for that little hole. I think I got it. Yep. You might have to cut some off as you go. 
because there's really not a lot of room back there. Bottom one. So our fan is almost on. So I have some stainless steel zip ties that I'm going to use, and this way heat will never, ever affect the installation of this unit, because God forbid these all melt off, I know I have stainless steel ones holding it on, no matter what. Just keep feeding it through, making it tighter. One thing I hate about these metal zip ties, it's so hard to cut. Oh, here we go. Stick it in and loop it around the unit. Look at that. Sweet. Now I feel pretty confident. Because, you know, plastics can give out. Metal probably won't if they're this, that, this hard to cut. So we're going to take our wires, stick them out through here, feed them up. Since I don't like wires that vibrate and have no protection, I have some loom here, so I'm just going to slip that over it. This is a different style of loom that you normally would find. This is braided. It's not that corrugated style of loom. This offers some pretty good protection. Just gonna apply a little zip tie. A little zip tie to make sure it's nice and tight, not moving. Like that. I'm going to take the rest of this and feed it upwards. Now when you're pulling wire, just make sure you're not shaving the, um, the edges off because there's a lot of sharp corners around and even plastic can begin to shave and degrade the insulation of this wire. So if you feel any resistance, stop and check to see what it is because you could just be literally cutting your wire. So this is corrugated loom, it's plastic, and it adds a really good buffer for the wire so it doesn't vibrate itself and short out. I'm going to just fish this appropriately along where the rest of the loom is here. And if you're working on the Nissan Rogue, you'll see it down there. You can even zip tie this loom to the factory loom to make it a little bit more OEM-like. So I'm going to fish it up underneath here, underneath the radiator hose. This is the inlet side, so it gets very, very hot. And again, just zip tie the loom to the original loom here that's already there. This way you can prevent any issues because you know you're going along basically a factory approved spot, so that's good. I'm going to apply another zip tie here to hold our new wire to the original wiring here. And my radiator hose is pretty hot, so be careful with that. Because so I was testing the wires um, right before I started filming this. 
Alrighty, YouTubers, well, this concludes part one of this two-part series. So, so far, we've removed the front bumper, we've installed a fan onto the oil cooler or the transmission cooler. We've successfully routed the wires up to where we need to work. And next week, I will have a part two of this video, and that's gonna be the wiring. That is where we're gonna use the relays, fuses, and different terminals to connect everything together. If you visit my website, I'm stricken06.com, on there you will find write-ups in the blog section about relays, about fuses, electrical tools, all the things that I use and you see in my videos. So if you stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, or if you're watching this in the future, you can search my channel for the part two of this video, and that is going to be the wiring. So thanks guys for watching. It's Amstricken06 of Amstricken06.com, and I hope to see you next week.